Hey guys, I'm going to exist. So just before this tutorial starts, I just do want to say that recently I've released a new horror game called Moochie's Kitchen Reheated, which is supposed to be a reboot to my Moochie's Kitchen game series on Itch.io. So yeah, just recently I released Act 1 of Moochie's Kitchen Reheated. It is free on Itch.io, so if you want to go check it out and uh, even play it, you know, there's nothing to lose since it's free. So yeah, anyways, uh, let's continue on with the tutorial. Hey what is up guys, I'm Gunix here and welcome back to a brand new Godot tutorial here on the channel. So today I'm going to be teaching you guys about random number generation in Godot. So if you do enjoy this tutorial or you do learn something from it, be sure to like, comment and subscribe for more. And without further ado, let's get right into it. So what we're going to be doing first is I'm actually going to be creating a script. So I'm just in this example scene here with a bit of text and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a new script. And uh, if you've already got a script, that's totally fine. I'm just creating one for the purpose of this tutorial. If you don't already have a script, uh, you can just do what I'm doing and create one yourself. If you don't have a scripts folder, I do recommend creating a scripts folder to save your scripts in. You can just click on this little icon here to create a new folder if you want to. And then once you have your new script created, um, we can just move on. I'm just going to actually call this script rng.gd. There we go. Alrighty, so whenever I do random number generation for my games, usually what I do first is I create a variable called RNG, and then I make sure that the type of this variable is random number generator. Now you don't have to do this if you don't want to, um, you don't have to like type in the type of the variable, you can just write a var RNG if you want to, but the reason as to why I like to do var RNG and then do the two dots and then write random number generator is because um, if we were to actually like, you know, do some scripting with this RNG variable, it then just makes it easier for us to do RNG stuff because it shows a bunch of, you know, like RNG based functions which show up and stuff like that, so yeah. So what I then like to do is I then like to go rng equals random number generator dot new. So what this is doing is this is actually making a new random number generator for us, which we can use throughout our script. So yeah, we only have to do rng equals random number generator dot new once, and then once we do that, we can use the rng variable throughout our script for number generation purposes. So what I'm going to be doing as an example in this script is I'm actually going to be making it so whenever we press down a key on our keyboard, uh, the RNG uh, variable here will do its thing and will randomly generate numbers. So what we're going to do is in our process function here, I'm going to write if input dot is action just pressed, and then I'm just going to enter in a random key here. We can just do uh, interact. So in case you don't know how Godot's input system works and you don't have any uh, keys put into your input system yet, what you do is you go project, project settings, then you switch over to input map. And then in the input map tab here, this is where you do your uh, inputs. So as an example for the tutorial, I am using the interact action which I have made up here, which is connected to the E key. So if you want to do something similar, you can just add your own action, call it what you want. So let's say, for example, I want to call this action something like um, equip. And then I press on the plus icon, and then you can assign your key to the action just by pressing it. So I'm going to press the E key, and then it assigns the E key. So that there's how you use the input system in case you weren't aware. And then what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to do the following. So we're going to be creating a new variable called num, and what num will equal to is the following. So we're going to do rng dot, and then what you'll notice here is if you've done uh, what I said to do and done var rng dot dot, and then done the random number generator afterwards to you know let uh, the script know that our rng variable is a is a random number generator, then what you'll notice is that. Uh, you'll actually have some things pop up here, some functions pop up here for our random number generator that we can use. So what I'm going to be showing you guys as an example today is I'm going to be showing you guys the randf underscore range and randi underscore range functions. So what randf range and randi range do is randi range or randi range, whatever you want to call it. Basically, this is used for randomizing ints. So that means full numbers. So integers, in case you don't know, are whole numbers. 
and then uh, rand f this is going to be used for randomizing floats which is numbers with decimal points so numbers like you know 1.523 or something like that so yeah i'm going to be showing you guys how to do uh, both integer generation and also float uh, random generation as well so first off let's go uh randy range so whenever we're randomizing numbers, we need to actually put in two numbers into these parentheses here to let the RNG variable know uh, what two numbers we want to generate between. So we need to generate between a range of numbers, but what numbers will they be? Well, you can enter out whatever you want to, of course, but as an example for this tutorial, I'm going to be doing 5 to 70. So basically what this uh, function will be doing here is we're going to be having a, a variable called num be made and then that will equal to rng dot randy underscore range so we're getting a you know a random integer from a range of numbers and the range of numbers that we're choosing between are 5 and 70. So that means that any number between 5 and 70 can be selected. So that could be 6, 8, you know, 23, 35, you know, any one of them numbers that is in between the numbers 5 and 70. So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to then go uh, print and then we're going to go str to convert our number into a string and then we're going to write num and basically we're just going to print the number into our uh, little output console here so if you don't have your output console open right now just go to the bottom of your Godot uh, window here where it says output just click on that and then boom you have your uh, your output console show up so now that we have this all done we can just simply go test it out so let's go test out our scene and then when I press the interact key what you'll notice in my output console is now we have random number generation. So yeah, whenever I press a key right now, as you can see in the output console, a random number is being selected. So all these numbers are between 5 and 70, since that's the range of numbers we have in our script. So we can't actually select a number that's under 5 or over 70. So yeah, whenever I press the E key, which is my interact uh, action in Godot, um, whenever I press it, as you can see, uh, we have random number generation going on. Alrighty, so now let's do the random floats. So when it comes to doing, uh, you know, randomly generating floats, what you want to do is you want to replace the I with an F. And then with the numbers here, what you want to do is you want to do 0.0. So you want to add like a decimal point to your numbers. So I'll do 5.0 and 70.0. Boom, and now we can do float generation. So now we can randomly generate float numbers. So let's go test the scene again. And then whenever I press E, as you can see, a random number is generated once again, but this time they are all floats. So as you can see, we have numbers like 63.56105422973631. You know, they all have these uh, numbers at the end of them. So yeah. So RNG is very good for a lot of things in your games. You know, you can use it to randomize speed if you want to. You can use it to randomize other sorts of things. Like if a number equals to something, uh, then you can make a particular thing happen. Or if the number equals to another thing, you could make a particular thing happen. So yeah. So here's what I'm actually going to do as an example. Alright, so what I'm going to do is instead of doing a random range of floats, I'm going to do a random range of integers. So I'm going to do randy range instead of randf range. And then I'm going to randomize between 0 and 4. So what I'm going to do uh, as an example here is we're going to do... So we're going to get rid of this print line here for now. And then we're just going to write if num. So basically what we're doing is we're getting this number variable here, which will equal to one of the, you know, it will equal to a random number from our random range of numbers. And then if num equals to zero, what will happen is we'll go print and then we'll print something like, um, just something random like a uh, subscribe to Omegonics. So if, uh, if num equals to zero, then subscribe to Omegonics will be printed. And then we're going to do the same thing here. We're just going to like basically copy this line, these two lines here that I've got, 
and then we're going to paste them underneath a few times. You don't have to do what I'm doing here. I'm just showing you guys an example of, um, you know, how, uh, you know, checking for a particular number after random number generation works. So then you can have something happen uh, depending on what your number equals to. So if num equals to zero, then subscribe to Omegonics will happen. Then we'll have, you know, one, two, three. And what I'm going to do actually is um, instead of doing a random range of numbers between zero and four, I'm just going to do zero and three. There we go. So if if num equals to one, what will happen is instead of subscribe to Omegonics, it will say unsubscribe to Omegonics. And then um, if we have num equals to two, we'll just do um, just like hello. And then if uh, num equals to three, we can just do let's move out there we go so basically uh what we're going to be doing here is whenever we press our interact action uh which is the e key on my keyboard and then what i'm going to do is uh we're going to be getting a number variable so we're making a number variable and then we're using our rng variable to randomize between a range of ints so the range of numbers that we're randomizing between are 0 to 3. So only numbers between 0 to 3 can be picked. And depending on what is picked, so whether it's, you know, num equals to 0 or num equaling to 1 or num equaling to 2 or 3, uh, what will happen is then we'll then print strings into our consoles depending into our console I mean not console sorry so we're gonna print strings into our console to basically represent what number has actually been selected so now that this is all done oh and by the way if you want to instead of doing like ifs for all these lines you can also do else if for like the bottom three ones afterwards if you want to so you know you can just leave this top one here as if and then the other ones below is else if if you want to you don't have to but you know you can if you want to so now let's test it out. And now whenever we press E, as you can see, we now have a random string being printed down here. So depending on, you know, what the number in my random number generator equals to, we now have these random strings being printed. So we have hello, uns unsubscribe to Omegonics, subscribe to Omegonics, let's move out. So basically, as I just explained before, depending on what the number in our random range of numbers equals to, a certain string will be printed out. And when it comes to your game, uh, you know, let's say for example you want to make it so if a number equals to something, then you know, you have a particular thing happen. You can just um, add in whatever function you want to instead of it having to be a print line. It doesn't have to be a print line, it can be literally anything you want to. I'm just using the print line as an example. So yeah, so anyways guys, that's pretty much the end of this video when it comes to showing off, you know, basic random number generation in Godot. So if you did enjoy this tutorial, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more. And uh, yeah, I'll see you all next time. Bye.